Hello again, everyone. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the importance of computer attacks. We have also discussed about the networking threats, few of the networking threats. And so in this uh, lecture, we will discuss about few of the means to protect your computer or to prevent your computer from those threats. Threats that we're talking here are the viruses, say the worms, the spams, and the Trojan horse. And regarding hacking, we will discuss about that later. So we'll continue with the first one. The first prevention, the first way of preventing the threat from entering into your computer is with the help of this particular thing called a firewall. And firewall is the same thing that we have already discussed in the networking devices and where we have discussed about a bridge. I've mentioned that a bridge act as sort of a check kit. And we check the data that goes in and then that comes out of the network. So your firewall here can be either a hardware base or it can be a software base or it can be a combination of both hardware and software base. Your firewall here will always prevent unauthorized access which can be anyone, to or from the computer. So like what I've already mentioned, it acts in both ways. So whenever any data is to come out of your firewall, and is to come out of your network, so your firewall will check about the data first. Then it'll have to see whether this particular data meets the specified security criteria or not. If it meets the criteria, the required criteria, then it allows the data to go out into the internet likewise whenever any data is to enter your network so in this particular case the firewall will also check for the specified security criteria see whether this particular data okay it accomplished whether it has met all the required demands here in case if it's there okay fine then it will allow the data to enter into your computer whereas if in case any of the data that was supposed to go out or the data that's supposed to come into your network, if it does not meet the specified security criteria, if it doesn't meet the requirement here that data have to follow or data have to have in order for it to be considered as secured, then your firewall will block the data from going out or maybe will block the data from coming in into your network. So fine, it'll always filter both the inbound, the outgoing, the, the incoming, that means, and also the outgoing traffic here. That means the data that goes out or data that comes in. That is why what happened is it is very important for you to always keep your firewall updated. The endless number of virus, fine, every day people try to include, try to place new, new virus, new, new uh, worms, new security threat in general in the internet. So that is why your firewall as well as your antivirus software, they always have to be updated so that they can keep track of the latest threat, the latest security threat that are available in the internet or that is being circulated in the internet. Right. So okay, next one here is the cookies. And you must have thought of all this. Whenever your web browser sends a message to the web server, and that means a request and a request to the web server. The web server along with the requested page. And remember you send a request asking the web browser for giving you some particular page with the help of the HTTP protocol. So your web server will send the page to your browser. And along with that what happens is it will also send a small text file. A small text file to the browser. And then this text file will be stored either in the browser or it might be stored permanently in your computer's hard drive. Now this text file that is sent back from the browser site, I mean it comes from the internet site, right? from the website for where your this uh, particular message has been extracted. In this particular case, this will always contain the name of the website. Say for example, you try to log in into mpsc.com, say for example. Right, so it'll send that website name, it'll contain that website name file, and it'll also contain some unique ID tag. 
this unique ID tag is the unique identification of that particular website. And this is a proof that this is a particular, this is a genuine website. It will contain some sort of certification maybe, but some sort of security check that this is a secure website. So that will be stored in your web browser. Now what will happen is the next time you want to visit the same page, what your web browser will do is, your web browser will at the same time when you request for this, your this particular cookies will be attached with your web browser and then it goes to the web server then the web server will realize that this is a page that your web browser have already visited okay and it is a secure page so directly what it can do is it can just bring back the page and give it to the web browser this cookies here can last only for until the browser for as long as the browser is open i mean once you close your browser this will be deleted or they can also be stored in a more permanent place that is in your computer's hard drive it will remain there for as long as you don't you don't manually delete it or maybe for as long as they have not become expired now your disk cookies i mean a small text file that is sent from the web server to the web browser they are used to track down the pages that you have visited so it is easy for the web server next time that okay or like you, they can make sure that there's a page that you have already visited and this is say a secure page so fine they can forward the page directly to you maybe without having to check the pages again now besides that the cookies is also used in order to remember your preference when you use the website when each and every type of file if you are interested say in uh, movies what happened is okay your disk preference will be noted down and then what your web browser will do is sorry what your web server will do it, do it will update all those type of movies say that you are interested if you are interested say in education a particular type of say python when you browse for some python related stuff you browse it one time maybe two time and then this will be noted down by your web server and then it will upload this particular pages to your web browser automatically and you don't have to search for it but because this is considered as your preferred page so because of that your web browser will be loading this pages automatically to your web browser every time you input open your web browser when this is used to remember your preference when you use the website you might realize this fine when you open your web browser any of your internet any of your web browser say for example your google chrome what happened is there will be a list of files right that will be displayed there at the bottom now this list of files, if you notice they are not just any random file they are actually those type of file that you have been searching maybe previously i right? say if you're searching for something coronavirus related so all those pages related to that will be displayed there if you're saying say checking for some file from embos now embos related information will be displayed there if you're searching for python related data so python related data will be displayed there in the list so this is how your cookies remember your preference whenever you use any of the website right other than that there's another one here the hypertext transfer protocol security is one way of preventing your computer from the network security threat what you have used before is the hypertext transfer protocol or just the http the job of the HPP is simple. It is just to allow web pages to transfer, to transmit, I mean, from the server to the browser side. You send HTTP protocol, the rules, I mean, and then you transfer the pages from the web server, send it to the web browser. But now your HTTP is unencrypted. I mean, it does not provide any sort of security measure to the file transmitted. It does not encrypt. It does not... Uh, send the message in the form of a coded text so because of that what will happen here and uh, this particular protocol that means it does not protect your data from any interruption or maybe from any changes that someone who eavesdrop who try to overhear or try to snoop see and who try to track down the data it does not prevent them from modifying the data okay so it might create privacy vulnerabilities and your privacy might not be very secure here in that particular case so in order to protect this in order to prevent this from happening what happens is your http here will have another protocol 
which is referred to as the HTTPS. The S here is for secure. This is a hypertext transfer protocol which is more secure. So nowadays when you use the HTTP, you will see that automatically it will not be just HTTP. It will be HTTP attached with the S. This here will always verify. I mean whenever you use this, you send it from the web browser to the web server. Fine. So when the web server tries to send the page back to the browser, this will always verify the identity of the website or the web service for every connection. Every time you ask for a file, find this file here has to be verified. I have to make sure that there is no security threat in this particular data that is transmitted back to your web server. They will always encrypt the data that is transmitted. That means the data will always be transmitted in a coded form from the web server to the web browser if a web if a person enters some data even from his site i mean from the browser site the message will be encrypted and will be sent back to the web browser and only when it reaches the required destination it reaches the required website then only maybe it will be again and decoded back now whenever you perform any web transfer using this particular protocol this protocol will carry out or will perform very three basic simple steps it will always make sure that the certificate come from the trusted trusted party and it always verifies that whatever website is being transmitted whatever page is being transmitted to your web browser there will always be a certificate attached fine with every file fine in the form of your cookies say along with your cookies will come attached with the certificate so it will always make sure that this come from a trusted party. I mean, it is some genuine website. It's not some shady website that has been launched into the internet. And it will also check that the certificate is currently valid. Maybe someone, there is a possibility that someone might try to use the certificate of a genuine, web, a genuine website, which is no longer in use, which is no longer available, or maybe an outdated one. They try to use that. So your HTTPS here will always make sure that the certificate is the currently valid one, not the expired one. And besides that, it will also always confirm that the certificate has a relation with the site from where it is coming. Normally what happens is from the sender and the receiver site in between these two computers, if the web server here sends some message to the browse in between if someone get to eavesdrop that when someone get to over here the data that is transmitted they might try to change the data fine right? and divert the data somewhere else now what happens is when they divert the data or when they try to add up maybe some other data in there fine right? your web browse server remember might send a genuine page the valid one but in between there might be someone there is a possibility that someone make the changes so when it reaches the browser here, it is the job of the HTTPS here, the Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol, to make sure that this certificate comes from the genuine website. It is not that it is just some pages or some certificate that someone adds in the middle of the transmission. Right. So this is what your HTTPS will do. In the next class, we will consider about the different rules, the IT rules that the government implements and in order to protect your network security from hacking from information theft from uh, someone trying to access your identity uh, your identity and we will be talking in general about a cyber crime in the next lecture as for now we'll stop here for today we'll continue with the next lecture in the next class thank you very much